everyone, Zanflar Gaming here. So today I want to talk a little bit about bow ganking in Cyrodiil. Uh, this build that I'm running is not a build that I've created. Um, I did find this online, but I've found it to be fairly successful, so I'm here to share it. Uh, there are a couple of different things I'll go through about skills, kind of where to place them on the bars, that kind of a thing, but in general let's look at the gear first. So I'm running one piece Krogs. Uh, this is there just for the extra penetration. Um, I'm running a five-piece marksman uh, on both bars, and I'm running sprig and set as well on both bars. And this allows me to attain a very decent physical penetration of 11,000, alongside a decent weapon damage of 3,472. Now these values on this are fully buffed and in stealth, etc. Crit, fairly low, but you should, um, use the Morph of Cloak that gives you 100% crit chance on your next ability within 3 seconds, so this is kind of irrelevant. Uh, stamina is about almost 36k, so a fairly decent stam pool. I do use Tristat food, so notice your recoveries are going to be pretty crap. And to be honest, you don't really need recoveries with this build. It's kind of designed for more hit a target and then cloak. Now, I do like Tristat food. I feel like 14k Magicka is about where you want to be on a Nightblade to cloak. I think I get between 7 or 8 cloaks with that big of a Magicka pool. And I'll go into some other abilities and kind of why you want Magicka around that level. So, I would recommend Tristat food. Other foods you could use, I mean, you could use, um, oh, what is it? Uh, this one, Dubious Cameron Throne use that if you want. You could use buy stat food. Um, yeah. So that's pretty much it for the gear. Uh, CP's here. If you want to copy it, you're welcome to. I found that I like having a high balance between Master at Arms and Mighty. And then from there, going a little bit into piercing for extra penetration. Just to, just to hit the 11k penetration mark, I find that to be uh, about all you need. And then Precise Strikes, this is where I'm going to keep putting the rest of my CP and keep going up from there is kinda I've got another like eight points that I'm gonna get yet. So that'll go all into precise strikes at that point. Defensives kinda play with how you want. Same with the uh, green tree. I would recommend some points into tumbling tumbling and uh, break free cost sprinting. And then befoul, because we are using the lethal arrow morph of snipe and that allows it to um, put a healing debuff on targets major defile. So I put a few points into there as well. So as far as the skills, I've actually seen some people, um, I've seen a lot of different bar swaps, and I've found that this is the best setup for my playstyle, and I'll get into that a little bit. So let's start on the 2H bar. Uh, on the 2H bar, I like to run your typical gank setup for, maybe not gank, but your typical Nightblade setup, except I put Resolving Vigor here instead of what most people would run Mass Hysteria there. But... I don't have play I don't have a spot for resolving vigor on my bow bar, so I just kinda go without mass hysteria. And to be honest, I don't really engage on my melee bar that often. It's really only there as a last case scenario or worst case scenario kind of a thing. So it, it can hold its own, but it's not your preferred method of play. Now the bow bar. I run poison injection and lethal arrow. Poison injection's there kind of as a mini execute. I really don't use this too often. Um the only time I'd ever really use this is if I needed to quickly finish off a target that was low health. You can put it up, but I find that two snipes is more than more than you really need to kill people. And my snipe tooltip, fully buffed and in stealth, let's just do that real quick so you can see it. Alright, snipe tooltip is 17,722. That's a pretty decent snipe tooltip. It, it's not bad. Uh, again, because of our points in Befouled, you have about 42% reduction with Major Defile, which is really nice. And I also have a, a Disease Enchant on my bow. And this also can proc Minor Defile as well on the target, which is close to 21%, I believe, with the amount of CP I have invested. So it, it, if it procs, you can get like 63% reduced healing, which in Cyrodiil is quite a bit. The Enchant on my 2H bar doesn't really matter because I am running a Poison. Um, my poison that I run on my 2H bar is your typical, you know, damage poison, cost, stam cost reduction poison. Um, I find this to be pretty useful against most classes. It's a little more useful if you were running with mass hysteria, because then you can kind of force them to break free when the poison procs, that kind of a thing, and drain their stamina further, but, you know. You could also run double damage poisons here if you want. They're just there because they're there. I don't really care too much about the enchant on the 2H. And, you know, you can gold it if you want, but again, your bow is going to be your primary means of killing people. 
So then we have uh, Shadowy Disguise, this is here um, to cause your next ability to crit. And so your original ability from stealth is going to crit so long as you're behind the target. But what you do is once that first one hits, if you've charged up two snipes, which you should, um, you would cloak to allow your second snipe to crit as well, forcing both snipes to crit. Now we are Wood Elf, this gives us the stealthy passive. And the stealthy passive is amazing. It is right there. Gives you 10% additional damage while done in, um, from stealth. And I believe this does apply while you are inside of Shadow Disguise. I could be wrong, but from what I've seen, it, it tends to apply. Now, a lot of people will run Relentless Focus on their 2H bar. I have seen this from multiple uh, videos with bow ganking. The reason you don't want to do this is simply because in your Assassin's Tree, you have all of these buffs. And some of them, specifically, will say when an assassination ability is slotted. Example, hemorrhage increases your critical damage done by 10%. If you do not have an assassination ability on your bow bar, you are losing 10% critical damage done. So you pretty much have to run at least one assassination ability on your bar. I find Relentless Focus to be the best one to run on this bar. You could run Mark Target if you so chose and put, re put Relentless Focus over here, and you can run a full support bar here if you'd like. But I found that for the way I like to play, I tend to run it this way. And then Radiant Mage Light is here specifically for the Mage's Guild perk. The bottom of the tree, you have to get to level 10 to get this at its to 100% whenever you use a Mage's ability, but increases the direct damage of your next attack by 20% for 5 seconds after you use a Mage's Guild ability. This is very nice, so you would just use this right before you'd go into your Snipe Snipe rotation. And yeah, that would be about it. Flawed Stunbreaker, um, I'm still working on level on this morph. I was using the stun morph of this for a long time while playing Nightblade, but I found that the extra 5% weapon damage that you get from running Flaw Flawless Dawnbreaker is very much worth it over the stun morph. So I tend to run that one. Otherwise, that's pretty much it for abilities. Oh, potions. So the reason I have immovability crit potions... Uh, you could use any generic potion that you want, but these are here specifically for the immunity. Um, specifically for Sorks. I mean, that's really the only reason this is here. If you are going to gank a Sork 9 times out of 10, they are going to have their buff up that stuns you whenever they take damage. I have found that to be incredibly annoying when trying to gank Sorks. So what I will do is if I see a Sork that's low health and I'm ready to hit him, I will just pop an essence of immovability, and then I'll do my snipe rotation. This makes it so you can't get stunned, and you are much, much, much more likely to be able to pull off a gank on a Sork. Now, I understand that a lot of people don't like bow gank builds. Um, they think they're cheap, or they think they're ineffective because of Miot's add-on that allows you to see when people are going, you know, when people are casting. Supposedly in the next patch, they're working on fixing some of that. We'll see what happens, but I will tell you from my experience, um, it, it is what it is. I mean, there are going to be people who are just going to dodge your snipes every day and you're never going to get kills on them, and, you know, that's the name of the game. But for the people who aren't running the add-on, or even if they are running the add-on and they're out of stam, they're good as dead. This build hits ridiculously hard. The highest snipe crit I've seen in PvP thus far, and I'm not max CP yet, so this will get higher, um, was 19k. I mean, that was, again, that was against a low CP target, but at the same point, 19k. My average snipes, and I'll, I'll throw a couple videos in here at the end to show you kind of what it is, average between 10k and... 15 to 17k. So it's like 10 to 17k, somewhere in that range. If a target, like the most decked out tanky target that I've ever seen, I, the lowest snipe I've landed is 8k on those targets. And those are usually your health stacked tanks that are running 40k health and perma blocking. So I mean, this, this hits incredibly hard. On top of that, it puts up a major defile, which, <laughs> you know, if they can't cleanse that off, they're not going to be able to keep healing. And they will eventually, they'll drop faster than they would if they could keep healing, basically. So, so yeah, that's pretty much the build. Um, I'm going to tack a couple videos on at the end to kind of show you guys how it performs, and I hope you like it. Thank you very much.